Good morning, welcome to our homestead. Are you thinking of DIYing your own solar system like we have? Well, I want you to be aware that there are a ton of tiny little hidden small costs in small parts that need to be purchased when putting this together. I'm going to go over all of those today and how much each piece cost and then how much the total was in the end and you are going to be shocked. <music> So before I go over all the parts and pieces, I want you to be aware that the solar company that you purchase your equipment from is not going to have everything you need. Mostly everything that they are going to sell you is on the DC side of things that is directly related to the inverters and the panels and all of the equipment. But for the AC side of things, connecting to your house or structure like we are here in the barn, you need to find and purchase all of that material. Additionally, there are going to be parts on the DC side of things that your solar supply house is not going to have. And that includes a little small breakers and connectors, etc. Now, some supply houses are better than others in the amount of little parts that they have and carry in their warehouse. Signature Solar is the one that I work with and they have a lot of things, a lot of those little parts and pieces that you need already at their warehouse. But again, remember that's only for the DC side of things. And just be mindful that if you're shopping for a solar bundle or solar kit, a lot of those do not have those little small parts and pieces that you need. So when you get on the AC side of things, you are going to need a lot. Let's talk about conduit first. So for both of our systems, the one here for the barn and the one for the house, we purchased a lot of inch and a half electrical conduit. This is run for our AC supply conductors, but it is also run underground from our ground mount to our house to uh, accommodate our PV wires. Now, some people say, ah, you can direct bury PV wires. While that is true, don't do it. It's always best to have it in conduit. Obviously this one's cut, but each one of these 10 foot sections of inch and a half PVC electrical conduit is $23. These 90 degree elbows are close to $5. This is what's called an LB box, and these are almost $10 a piece. And for the system here at the barn, I have five of these, that's almost 50 bucks. And on the barn system, I have four 90 degree bends and actually one 45 degree bend. And that one was close to $8. These threaded male adapters are $4 each. And then for those, you need lock nuts. These are 75 cents each. And then as your wire comes up over this edge, it's a little bit sharp. So I recommend getting an insulating bushing. And these are almost a dollar a piece. My total run for my AC wires into the barn here with risers and to all the electrical uh, connection boxes was roughly about 70 feet. Now you can see we are adding up really fast and I'm only talking about pieces of conduit. On the AC side of things, you are going to need a disconnect switch and a small breaker panel. This nice switch is hard to find, especially for me in Texas right now. This one was $135. The small breaker panel was around $50 at Home Depot. And we also have the one for our main system in our house, which was about $75. When you get into these panels, many of them do not have additional grounding lugs or grounding lugs that are maybe big enough for the wire that you are using. So for this one, we had to buy two extra neutral lugs for this panel and that costs us 10 bucks each so 20 bucks there it also didn't have a ground bar on it so we had to buy a ground bar and that was about eight dollars you can see we are adding up fast some will need these and some won't these are little knockout seals if you knock out a piece of your breaker box or your uh, disconnect switch and you don't end up using that hole you really want to cover it up so these can be used to cover that up. These are only about $2 for this little bag, but it starts to add up. Additionally, this cable connector, if you are running out of your sub panel, any Romex cable for any um, plugs or outlets that are in near your solar system, or you just want to run it off the sub panel, you're going to need these. These are about five or $6 a piece. And this next one would be a little controversial, but if you need it, if you were driving a ground rod, those are about $17 for, at least here in Texas, for a eight foot ground rod, half inch. And then you also need this connector for it as well to attach your ground wire to that grounding rod. And this was $4. And since I have not called to disconnect grid power from our property, 
I have the service and it's 15 bucks a month. I use my solar systems like generators. So most of the time they're on, but on our main panel, so I don't backfeed the grid, especially if the grid is down, I have a generator interlock kit. And for most main service panels, these interlock kits are going to run about 30 bucks. Let's jump back over to the DC side of things here for a second. This Nader breaker is used to disconnect our batteries from our inverters. It's an extra added layer of protection that at least Signature Solar recommends, but we need something to cover that. It comes just bare like this. It's got a DIN rail, so it's connected in here already. I'm not gonna take it out. But this little distribution protection box is $15. And for our system, we'll have two breakers, so two boxes, so 30 bucks. And then for grounding our solar panels, we are going to need these little grounding lugs. And these are $3 each, and depends on how many panels you have, they start to add up quick. So if you have parts and pieces that connect via DIN rail, you're going to need some extra DIN rails, and we did for this project. This whole box was about $17, but it's got a, quite a few pieces in it. So if your battery cables that you've purchased do not come with ring terminals on the ends, and I would recommend getting ones that don't because you can customize the length yourself for your system, you're gonna need the ring terminals. And I have about three bags of these, so that was total about $30. And I also have some smaller ones here for small wire that I bought from Home Depot, and I think this was six bucks. So it's recommended that when you connect your conductors to your inverters or your MPPT that you use what's called a ferrule. And to clamp that ferrule on the end of your wire, you're going to need a ferrule crimping tool. For a bunch of ferrules and that crimping tool on Amazon, I think I spent $16. Something I forgot about when talking about the conduit was the glue to actually put the pieces together. These jars are about $8 a piece and they do gel up pretty quick. So you should be able to knock your project out, but if you have any space of time between starting and ending the project, you might need to buy a couple of these like I have. And then additionally are conduit straps or pipe straps. And this is just an example. I have the inch and a half, but you're gonna need these. And for the inch and a half, whether it be plastic or the steel like this, they're about a dollar each. Since I just mentioned this crimping tool, let's talk about specialty tools that you may need for your job. So for us, when we started all of these projects, I needed a few specialty tools that I didn't have. I believe I spent about $135 on all of these tools. And the first one here is a large battery cable stripper. This is really nice. And I'm gonna list all of these and all those parts and pieces and how much they cost in the description below the video. Along with that, I needed some crimpers. So I have a small wire crimper here, and I also have a large battery cable crimper here. And this is the cheapest one you can get. And this is just uses a spring and force of a hammer to smash down that ring terminal on the end of your battery cable. I had an old multimeter, but for a project like this, you really need something that is a little bit more professional. And this clamp meter was, I think, $50. So this is a Klein clamp meter. It's great. It's got a lot of different functionality on it. It doesn't break the bank. You can spend, you know, several hundred dollars on these. So this one was a great price point and it does a lot. Probably the best investment in a tool that I've made besides that clamp meter are these wire cutters. These are made by Tuosin. It's a Japanese company and they are razor sharp. I've been using these for many different projects on the homestead where I need to cut some sort of wire and they are still razor sharp two years later. Then I've had a couple of grumpy people say they dislike these, but these are the best wire strippers that I've ever come across. They are super easy to use. I absolutely love it. It works every time. So back on the AC side of things, this is a big one that people often overlook the cost of, and that is the wire. For this project for our barn, we have an 85 foot run for four gauge wire. The total cost for all of this wire was almost $700. So this cost for everyone is going to be very project specific. And for us, we needed wire this big to mitigate voltage losses for this long run. So we needed to go a little bit bigger, which was a little bit more expensive. In our house, we also have four gauge and that run from our sub panel back to our main panel was 55 feet. Wire is not cheap and it's often overlooked when you're budgeting for a solar system. 
So make sure when you're budgeting out for this to jump online and look at some pricing for wire. Home Depot and Lowe's are more expensive than an electrical supply company like Elliott. Usually there's an Elliott electrical supply in a lot of towns across the country. So check for them. They are much more affordable. Here are those lugs that I was talking about earlier, but you're also going to need to purchase some copper ground wire. And then for wire management, we've also got these management clips and those aren't that much. It's only about five or $6 for a pack of a hundred. For us, we also do inline fuses on our positive and those are about $8 a piece. Also on the distribution side of things, you may need a combiner box. So this box here is just a plain box. However, on our other system, we have one from Midnight Solar and that was about $180. This box here was only $50, but we did add some of our DIN rail pieces as you can see. We've got a DC breaker, a surge protection device, and these terminal blocks, this distribution terminal block right here. The SPDs were 14, the DC breaker is about 23 a piece depending on brand, and this DIN rail terminal block distribution block was $30 for all of these pieces together as a kit. Excuse me, my rooster is a little loud this morning. And then for good wire management, you are going to need cable glands. You can see I've got them in the bottom to secure our PV lines here into this distribution box. And these were probably about $10, I think it was. I forgot to actually write that down. $10 for a pack of like 25 of them. Again, not that expensive on its own, but those little things are starting to add up. One thing I forgot to add into this project and the total on the end I just realized is this one inch conduit and all of the little pieces associated with it. Now, there isn't that much of a run here, but it does kind of start to add up. I would say maybe $30, $35 in additional cost for all of these little pieces for the one inch conduit. The PV lines that you buy are never going to be the correct length for your system. So you are going to need to buy additional MC4 connectors. And each of these connectors is about $2 a piece. Welcome back inside of our chicken coop solar room. Excuse the air conditioning noise behind me. So for our system, we've got this flexible conduit. This conduit is about $35 for 50 feet. And that was plenty for our project. So we have a little bit extra left over. Each one of these little um, liquid-tight connectors here that connect to our load center are about $1.50 each. So I have four here, and then I have four connected on our Victron inverters. So that's a total of $12 for those. If you decide instead to run a wiring trough like this, these can get quite expensive. This one was $75. It's four inches by four inches by four feet long. And remember, in your load center or sub panel, you are going to need AC breakers. So this is a 60 amp breaker, I believe it was around $20. But depending on the size that you need, the cost is going to be a little bit different. With both of my systems, I have extra bus bars, and that's to assist with the distribution from the batteries to the other components in the system. These bus bars are made by Pike Industries. They are incredibly beefy, I think they're 600 volt, and they are $60 a piece. One thing people often overlook when installing one of these systems is all of the mounting hardware that you're going to need. These flip toggle bolts aren't cheap. They are the best though, and that holds the weight of inverters like these. I believe these were $16 or $17 for a pack of 10. But these don't work for mounting everything, so you are going to need like a box of screws. And those are about $10 for a one pound box. All right, here we go, folks. What is the grand total for all those hidden small parts and pieces that you don't think about if you're going to DIY your own system? For us, including that $700 roughly in wire was, you ready for this? It's a shock, $1,000. $949.40. Now, could we have cut some corners and done it for a little bit less? Yeah, we could have, but I don't want to cut any corners. I want this system to be solid and as correct as I know how to make it. All right, we hope we've covered absolutely every part and piece in a system that maybe wasn't thought about before. If you've got any extras, leave them for me in the comment section below. Or if you have any questions, also leave those down there in the comment section for me. 
and I'm happy to answer all of them. Now go check out this video right here, which is part one in our Victron installation series. Have a beautiful, blessed day. We'll see you next time. Bye.